All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Talladega Weekend on this one here. I understand this will be a shorter video, but you can tune into live shows on Saturday and Sunday. And speaking of live shows, if you want to show up, if you want to complain about your week, if you want to just chat with people in the chat, talk with me, hear me rant, hear me talk about whatever you want, really, truly outside of racing, because look, it's super speedway racing, okay? You got stack from the back, you got people chasing the optimal. We all kind of know the gist here. We're here to have a good time on these weekends. Uh, you know, work should be very minimal. That's just how it is. You know, we have to wait for the qualifying order to be out, you know, yada, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, I will, however, be talking specifically about the Spring Cup Series race here. I'll talk about Xfinity as well. But let's just get out of the way, okay? Statistically speaking, this race weekend tends to be the highest statistical percentage of races that tend to have the least amount of wrecks and the races that go green the most that's just how it is specifically when you compare them to the other four super speedway races i still throw atlanta out that's a hybrid we don't necessarily categorize that in the same system that we're gonna i don't i don't keep that with daytona talladega that's just how it is when you compare those four racetracks you have the fall daytona weekend being the most chaotic, most variance, most wrecks, you know, huge place differential potential for guys in the back. And then you have the Daytona 500 weekend. And then you have the fall Talladega weekend. And then lastly, for wrecks, for chaos, all that stuff to happen, it's this weekend right here. Now, for me, just getting through it very quickly, and also I have made hours and hours of videos related to how I approach this, breaking down you know, super speedway racing, breaking down optimal lineups, whatever the case may be. I've done that a ton before. I'm not necessarily going to try and repeat myself every single time. But due to the fact that this has the highest likelihood of, of us just not having wrecks, well, one, I build the same way. I build for wrecks regardless. I'd much rather enter a super speedway weekend hoping for wrecks than hoping it to stay green. Two, you will see a leverage play. You will see people chasing the optimal, trying to land on the optimal lineup, and you'll see less ownership in the back of the field this weekend. And that's just how it is. I personally like that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't, whatever the case may be. But uh, that's how I'm approaching. So I also want to bring up this one. You'll remember this... Um, You'll remember this uh, sheet from, uh, just because I've, I've mentioned it before. Now, this has not been updated since February. I have not updated the optimal lineups for this year's plate races. But, and, f 1 to 22nd, I randomized because I didn't necessarily want them being dictated by the track and weekend. I just wanted to see where the races were being distributed. Uh, these four races, clearly the Daytona 500 from last year, Spring Talladega race, Summer Daytona race, and Dega Fall of last year. So these are in order. These 22 are not. However, let me go ahead and uh, head here and take my head out of the way so you can see all the all my you know documents and links and stuff, which all this stuff's private anyway. Um, let's just, uh, what is it? Let's zoom this out a little bit. I was going to say bang it out, but that, I didn't like how that was going to sound. Anyway. Um, these are how the optimal lineups have been distributed for the past 24 races other than the Daytona 500 for this year. Uh, when we look at where the optimal lineups are coming from, which I also want to big, big exclamation point, ladies and gentlemen, all right, let's not worry about chasing an optimal lineup. I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting. You're not going to hit it. There's no way in hell you're going to hit the optimal lineup. That's just how it is. See this line right here on 20th? That is halfway through the field. Uh, very easily, or I have it highlighted just to very easily say, well, whenever we do a 4-2 line, whenever you want to have half your guys from the back of the field, whatever the case may be, you can move this line wherever you want. If you want it in 17th, you can have it in 17th. You, can, you want it at 27th, you can have it at 27th. But this is the cutoff point in my point of view of, you know, a 4-2, a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you are uh, distributing your lineup drivers or the drivers in your lineup and you want more guys in the back of the field, 20th would be your cutoff. You know, anything for that, that's in front of the field. Everything behind this is the back half of the field. When we look at races that have gone green at Talladega, I can tell you two for sure that I know this is a... Spring Talladega race. 
This is a spring Talladega race, okay? Kind of anomalies, okay? Anomalies in a sense of we have way more people starting up front than most races. Most of the time, you're going to see at least two, possibly one. But whenever we get to Talladega, we see an uptick of drivers who are starting up front, okay? And specifically drivers who are starting up front that are leading laps inside the top 10. So this is Talladega, this is Talladega, this is Talladega, this is Talladega. Just how it is. That's how it plays out. Same thing last year. When we look at Talladega Spring Race, more drivers from the front half of the field than the rear. Nearly nobody in the back half of the field. Whereas when we get Rex, that's when... And this is just the optimal line. This isn't necessarily how these guys or how these positions are scoring. This is just the back half of the field. Anyway, when we get to... Let me go ahead and... and Hop back on the screen. Let me go here. So when we jump through, and as I said, we are just specifically looking at the spring Talladega race for this video here. Let's take a gander. Let's take a look. Okay, spring race last year. When we look at this, and this is just using race and reference. We're not looking at DraftKings points. We're not using any of that stuff here. We're just looking at how these races are playing out really fast. Percentage of race ran under caution, 14 Average green flag around 22 laps. When we look at the amount of wrecks that happen, very, very limited amount of wrecks, very limited amount of place differential being given to a majority of people starting inside or outside the top 30, if not, you know, from 25th on back. Yes, we have a 28th with Chase Elliott. We have a 27th with Bowman. I mean, these are good cars in general, but for the most part, 39th Landon Castle, 31st Noah Gregson, 36th Reagan, or 24th Reagan, um, you know, JJ, BJ, we're not gaining a ton of place differential here. Now, yes, they're safe. I mean, first off, you need to play these guys anyway. Uh, you just need to accept that, hey, look, just like each and every week, we might just, we might not make money. And there's a high likelihood if you play guys from the back like I'm going to do this weekend, you're not even going to cash. You're not even going to be near the bubble. That's just how it is. But the reason being is one wreck can always change that. But look at the amount of people in the lead lap, 21. Amount of people still in the race, 25. Why are these people down a lap? Why are they not able to pass people? Well, it's because uh, this race is going green. Lots of people are going laps down. That's just how it is. BJ McLeod is multiple laps down. You know, that's just how it is. The sl slow cars in the back, back markers are going to get lapped. That's just how it is. When we look back at the uh, spring race last year, yet again, wow, nearly nobody wrecked out. Percentage of race ran under caution, 17 Average green flag lap, 19 lap. But when we look at these crashes here, yes, we had a huge crash here. We didn't necessarily lose a lot of these guys. Yes, they got damaged, but these guys weren't knocked out of the race. You know, and let's go back here. Biggest race, biggest crash here, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now it says nine cars. That might not be nine cars on the wall. That's just nine cars that got touched in this accident. Okay? Same thing here. We're not seeing gigantic wrecks, okay? We're not seeing a, a huge amount of people being destroyed, people being knocked out of this race. If you are playing guys from the back here and you look at starting position versus finishing position, you're having a rough time. You're just not you're not scoring. When you look at how these guys are finishing here, we don't really see necessarily a ton of them, you know, be scoring well. That's just how it is in terms of being optimal. They're going to – let me change that. They're – you're certainly losing – a, uh, a high likelihood of, of hitting an optimal chasing this many guys back here, but that's just how I'm going. Uh, when we look at the spring race in 2020, yet again, wow, nobody wrecked out, okay? Wow, really, we didn't have any cautions at all. And when I say cautions, when I'm looking at yellow specifically, how many people are involved, how long are they, what's the consistency of them, we, when we look at other plate races, this is a much higher percentage, okay? When we look at other plate races, there's a much higher percentage of people not finishing races, okay? Look at how many people got lapped in this race. 24 cars in the lead lap, okay? That's just how it is. When we go even farther back, 2019, yet again, now we have crashes here, but this is a crash on the white flag. You can't gain positions late in the race. You can't do any of that. If you're in the back and they wreck and you're lapped down, you can't past these guys you know you see a good majority of people who start inside the top 20 finishing inside the top 20 and guys starting outside the top 20 finishing outside the top 20 that's just how it is this is a you know 11 percent of the race was ran under yellow that's just how it is okay so you're gonna hear well you know you're, you're gonna want at least two guys uh, you know inside the top 15 possibly here look for me I approach Daytona Talladega the exact same way. Most people know that. I play guys in the back. I rarely play people inside the top 20. That's just how it is. All it needs is one wreck. We get that at every other race. Statistically speaking, we just don't have the wrecks here. 
we're going to have an anomaly one day. We're going to have a wreck. We're going to have a wreck fest on a spring at some point. That's just how it is. It's like building showdown lineups, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, you know, that tight end two might not be the optimal captain each and every showdown. But, man, it's going to happen. It's, it's here and there. Just building for a situation that, yeah, sure, likelihood of it of it happening is, is slim, but you get fantastic leverage, and it's way easier than trying to be like, well, let me let me try and nail just an optimal line. Let me let me really try and pinpoint this here. What's that? I'm playing two guys from the top ten. Like, uh, like I don't I don't want to deal with that. Specifically for a green super speedway race, same thing with Xfinity. Green Xfinity races are a nightmare to build lineups for. That's just how it is. I don't I personally do not want to waste my time doing that. That's just where I'm at. Uh, even going farther back, we're in 2018, okay? Yes, we get some more wrecks here, but still 50% of the race ran under yellow. And where are the guys in the 30s finishing? Well, this is a race where, yeah, they you would have been you would have been not only cashing, you would have been probably scoring pretty decent here. Uh, but yeah, this is going back to 2019 or 2018. You know, it's been a it's been five years since we had a race like this, you know? Are we going to get it here? Probably not. This package sucks. The next-gen car is, is kind of dog shit. <laughs> you know, uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, <clears throat> I've been on the horn since before the next-gen car came out. I'm glad that everybody's kind of getting around to it and getting kind of around where I'm at. But, look, the, pla- the platform is a bust. And I hate to say it, we're never going back to anything better than this. So this is just the new NASCAR. So as you're raising your uh, children... Uh, you could just tell them it's never going to get any better than what it is today, and you will never see anything better like what it was yesterday. It's just always the day you're in is the best you're ever going to see. <laughs> um, anyway, continuing on, let's look at the Xfinity Series race. Now, it's it's kind of weird. They went to they went to Talladega twice since COVID. Uh, it's a shame they're only going once this year. I have had a horrific, horrific experience with Xfinity at Talladega. It has been horrific. Several races ending early with rain, with light, uh, like a light issue because Talladega does not have lights. It's been a mess. It has been a, it's been very, very few instances that I have won money at at Xfinity Talladega uh, of recent, specifically in the spring. Now this is October. I kept this in there, but you can you can see. Look at this. Holy frijoles, ladies and gentlemen, the entire field finished the race. <laughs> oh my god. I'm building for a wreck fest and the whole field finishes the race. I'm up a creek without a paddle. That's just how it is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's that's how it is. When you look at the April race last year, you know, this is a situation where yeah, we did get some yellows and stuff. But look where the 30s are finishing. Look, you know, we're having a quite a lot of 30s, which th- this this field is so incredibly frustrating. These I hate. This is a a really really shitty race because everybody I I really liked, you know, got involved in wrecks or just finished couldn't couldn't gain that many positions. You know, Greg Alling 31st to 20 or 30 third to 21st. Um, you know, Clements, Ryan Ellis, David Starr. J.J. Yaley, Mason Massey, Chandler Smith. Unfortunately, I, would, I just typically enjoy playing those players here. Joey Gay is always a good guy. Uh, plate races if we get in yellows. But this is a situation where I know for a fact that I had a lot of people who I just had being involved in wrecks. Excuse me. But we're seeing... Now this was... I would honestly say this is more of the anomaly. We very rarely see an Xfinity Series race, specifically in the spring, have this many yellows. As we continue to move forward... Now yet again, this is the fall race... Good majority of people finishing races. This this race, this crash, just having the yellows towards the end of the race. Uh, and it's a situation where a lot of the guys in the back are getting desperate and making stupid moves. Uh, anyway, that's just how it is. I mean, we have Joe Graff Jr. going from 40th to 10th. You know, a lot of 30 guys going from here, which this is a situation where this is what's kind of needed for at least my situation. 39th, 38th, 33rd, 35th, 32nd, all finishing inside the top 20, 30th, near the top 20. This is a typically a situation where I assume I'm, I made money on this race. I don't necessarily remember, but just looking at the numbers, I never pay attention to the cars. Just looking at the numbers, I probably scored well here. Um, but I almost didn't. Almost didn't. This yellow comes out, you know, and we gained some positions here. But uh, there's a real chance that this race does not uh, have that yellow. Like, look at this. 
you know, very easily could have ran green because the 15 stalled on track and then they crashed on a restart, or at least early, and uh, so on and so forth. When we continue going on, uh, this is a Jeb Burton win. Yeah, so this one, I got cleaned out. I got absolutely just handed, my ass got handed to me because this was a rain-shortened event. These idiots wrecked coming to rain, and nobody could uh, pass anything at all. That's just how it is. Uh, if it's a rain wreck, I, that's just how it is, man. It's been, it, it's certainly brutal at times. Here, late, yet again, late in the race. We get wrecks, but it's it's late in the race, late in the event, you know? Uh, that's just how it is. Anyway, I'm kind of just blowing through these really fast to just give you a summary of, of expanding races and stuff like this. Another situation where a lot of back half the field guys that you would typically play for second in the back just kill themselves and wreck themselves. Uh, so entering this weekend, statistically speaking, least likelihood of a wreck fest for the Cup Series. I would argue the same thing for the Xfinity Series. Um, I am going to build facing the other direction of just building for a wreck, building for wrecks. That's just how I like to build. Um, and we can go hang out and just have a, have a blast and goof around and rant about whatever we want in live shows and stuff. Also, we can enjoy the ARCA race. Now, that race has been a bit of a bust, too, because I like watching wrecks in the ARCA race, okay? They haven't wrecked a ton of the ARCA series. I'm hoping that they destroy some shit this weekend. Uh, and that's even better, because I don't have any money on that. I just want to see gigantic wrecks. But, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Talladega preview. I will see you guys in live shows Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Peace out.